Hey guys, guess what? I got a job at AMC Theaters, baby. Yes. And uh, look at that. I even got my own badge right there. It's my favorite movie's Lion King. Just to show you. I mean, it's, it's official, dude. It is official. Look at that. Um, and by the way, this does not mean free movies for you. I'm just kidding. Hey there, YouTubers. Yes, I got a job, new job at AMC Theaters. I'm so excited about it. Love my new job. Um, by the way, I'm in Southlands, Aurora, Colorado. So if you were ever out there at that mall, do not hesitate to come and visit me. But don't expect just to get free stuff because I can only give free movies out to friends and family. And don't pretend like you're my friend if you really don't know me. And yeah, whatever. So um, today on our list, we are talking about Mortal Kombat Legacy. Um, guys, call me late, call me slow, call me a slug, call me a turtle. I like turtle. Turtle's kind of cool. Plus, I got this turtle shell here. I just bought that. So, if you call me a turtle, that's totally fine. I wouldn't be offended by that at all. I mean, I actually really like turtles. But, getting off the subject now, so we should probably stay focused. Because I got a little script thing to guide me as far as my ideas. Blah, 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 blah. Let's keep going. I just finished uh, Mortal Kombat Legacy Season 2 this weekend. And... You know, I thought it was really cool. Um, you know, as always, after watching the first season, I was like, this is very different take as far as, um, you know, the Mortal Kombat characters. Um, you know, and of course, there's that familiarity, I think I said that right, um, that's introduced um, in inside of the origin stories of characters. Um, but particularly in this uh, season two, um, they introduced my favorite character. He got his own episodes and stuff. Liu Kang. Um, Brian T. from the Wolverine. You remember him? The guy in his underwear who got punched in the face? And yes. Uh, that is Liu Kang, folks. Yeah. The guy in his underwear. But, you know, hey, nonetheless, I really uh, I really like uh, Brian T. Um, as Liu Kang. Um, really thought he did a good job. Um... However, one of the things I didn't like um, as far as uh, kind of the origin and, and uh, introducing Liu Kang was, you know, um, I, I just, let me just say this. Let me back up for a second. I like the, the neutral aspect to Liu Kang. I like the fact, even like the Mortal Kombat 9, for instance, where he didn't really turn out to be how I thought he was going to be. Or, you know, how, you know, typically, you know, Liu Kang kind of seems to be the head honcho hero or whatever. I like the fact that he's kind of neutral and he's kind of got his own demons that he's fighting with and he seems to be this guy who's just kind of lost and confused. I mean, in this story, he's drunk and he's in a bar, you know, and um, he's just kind of out of it in a sense and kind of just looking uh, for danger and uh, something to kind of numb his pain in a sense. Um, and so, ironically, it sounds weird, but I like that aspect to this version of Liu Kang. What I didn't like is, I understand, you know, losing someone um, can definitely bring about pain and, and anger and all these emotions, but I feel like the his fiance when she died, it wasn't enough, you know, background story behind who she was that really made it believable for me in order to like really sell, you know, his anger and his emotion because, you know, he was a, a monk you know, and he, he leaves being a monk to be with this woman and, and be an, a regular person, but it didn't really say why he left, um, you know, specifically. Like, I understand, like, maybe he just wanted to live a regular life, whatever, but what was so special about just this particular girl? How did they meet? Um, and I, this is just my opinion. I wish that she would have had maybe, like, some more mystical background, you know, or maybe she was a monk, um, or in the monk community or something like that, and, you know, he wanted to date her, that would have been a little bit more believable for me, but, I mean, she was just a random girl nobody knew about, you know, she wasn't even in the Mortal Kombat, uh, character selection, so, you know, th that was the only thing I really didn't like about his anger behind, you know, losing his fiance, because I really didn't know who she was, but, okay, cool, whatever. So, I mean, throughout the, the middle of this and to the end, season finale, Liu Kang and Kung Lao, they're kind of like beefing, 
you know, Kung Lao, you know, um, he's just like a real cool, chill, wise monk, you know, um, and he wouldn't allow Liu Kang to come back to the monk community because, you know, like when you make an oath to stay with them, you're with them. If you leave, you're out, that's done, you can't come back. And, you know, Kung Lao's just standing on his word. And even though, you know, circumstances happen being a regular person, those are things you have to deal with with joy and pain. He even mentioned that um, uh, in one of the lines. Um, and so, you know, Kung Lao um, and Liu Kang are now beefing. Um, they're kind of at, at war with each other. And at the end of the, you know, the season finale, um, it shows, you know, Liu Kang and Kung Lao, they're about to throw it down. They're about to, you know, somebody's about to get fatalitized. I don't even know if that's a word, but I just made it up, fatalitized. So, really excited to see what's going to happen with that. Now, once again, you guys may call me really slow and really late, but I do not care. It has been a while since I've been able to catch up with it, and I finally did. And, you know, I'm really glad that I did. Um, because there's been so many different thoughts that have gone behind this series some people really liked it, some people really didn't and felt that is it necessary to do a season three because of the outcome of season two and you know now there already is production for season three. Um, they're already doing some choreography and filming and stuff. Um, so I mean right off the bat my expectations are we're gonna see some tournament stuff. We're gonna see Sonya and Jax obviously return um, and, and various other characters. Um, and another thing with season two I didn't like, I didn't really like the, um, I didn't mind it, I didn't mind it, and, but I didn't like the look of Ermac. He's also one of my favorite ninjas, I guess you could say, um, which, he's really not a ninja, he's just a demon who has like a bunch of souls inside of him, but nonetheless, I like, he, Ermac's one of my favorite characters, aside from Liu Kang. Um, and I just, I didn't really like his look, but I could live with it, you know, but, I don't know. Nonetheless, I hope they bring him back some, some way and somehow um, with a better look. And he doesn't necessarily have to look just like, you know, uh, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, just red. But um, I still kind of like that ninja-ish aspect that we have. But, you know, this is also a different version. So, um, yeah, guys, that's my two cents on uh, Mortal Kombat um, Legacy. Um, love to hear you guys' thoughts on what do you think about... Um, this this trilogy, this online series, and what are your expectations and hopes for season three? Um, and and yeah, that's it. Now, guys, this is kind of a you know not I don't, I don't want to say touchy feely subject, but it's just you know realness. Um, so I love Austin St. John, and really glad that he's making a comeback this year. Glad to see him, you know, really present and uh, involved in the you know community of. Power Rangers and, and really in touch with the fans. It's really cool to have him back. And I love Jason David Frank. I think he's doing some really cool stuff. Both of these guys are iconic um, actors and characters who have contributed so much, um, you know, not only to martial arts, but, um, you know, also to the Power Ranger community. Um, and one of the things, uh, I guess, that I keep hearing about, um, you know, this is just the kind of person I am. If I never heard it from somebody's mouth, you know, then it's, it's hard for me to believe, you know what I mean? I mean, I've just heard so many different things, but have never, you know, heard individually Austin St. John or Jason David Frank say anything negative about, you know, either one of them. I mean, that's probably because I don't know either one of them and never have sat down and had a conversation with both of them. Um, but due to you know so much speculation and and uh you know comments that i've heard from other folks um i think it would just be interesting and i like to hear you guys' thoughts on this like you never see them at comic cons together you know like in the same group maybe it's austin st john and uh, walter jones and a few other folks or jason david frank and and another part of the crew but it's never you know both of them together and i feel like it would just be great to have both of them there together and, you know, um, no fires burning, no no uh, hidden agendas or anything, but maybe just put them in a room before they go to the panel and just let them get out everything. Round one, fight! That actually might be kind of fun. But, you know, for, for realistic sake, I just think, you know, both of them are really great guys. I love what they do. 
Um, and I just think, you know, um, with them, you know, definitely knowing each other for so many years, um, it's just important to let bygones be bygones and uh, for them to really make things more clear um, and comfortable, I would say, for the fans, just to address whatever issue it is, get it out there and get it settled, um, whatever the issue may be, if there is an issue. Um, so, yeah, whatever. That's my thoughts on that. Yeah. I mentioned this comic briefly last time that we were together. I say that like we went out on the date last time we were together. Uh, we went to the park and we had some marshmallows and we sat in the, the little the grass and blah, 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 blah. But anyway, last time we were together, uh, that was so weird. Um, I talked briefly about this comic, um, The Superior Spider-Man, Spider-Verse. Um, just, I read it finally. Um, really, really loved it. If you are a Spider-Man fan, I would definitely, comic book fan, whatever, definitely recommend this one. Um, so basically, this is a spoiler. If you have not read it, um, do not watch this part. Just stop watching right now. Um, but don't forget to subscribe. Do not forget to subscribe. Um, so, uh, you know, Spider-Man, uh, when Superior Spider-Man, when uh, Dr. Otto Octavius uh, was around, he's back, but he's not back, uh, if that makes any sense at all. Um, when he was around, he was gone for like 24 hours, and this tells you where he went, basically. And he was traveling throughout dimensions, past, present, um, kind of formulating a team of Spider-Man because they were being hunted by some Spider-Killer guy and if they don't all team up to take him down then he will kill Spider-Man and Spider-Man will be no more. So, uh, really cool, you know, take, I love different takes on Spider-Man and this is one of those comics that does it for me so I would recommend checking that one out. Yeah. I don't know why I did that but yeah. yeah. <laughs> And as always, if you like what you receive from today's show, click that big old subscribe button that says subscribe right up here to get the latest on movies, music, comics, and television. I'm your host, Karan Jones. Thank you for tuning in to KMRS, Karan Media Review Show, where we discuss movies, music, com didn't, didn't I already say that? I think I already said that. But anyway, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, peace.